Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and distinguished delegates of the second scientific World Kurdish Congress. In fact, uh, in the morning we had a session, but also we had an important event going on. It was the opening ceremony of the Armenian International Trade Fair that we have had 850 companies from 23 countries participating in the fair, together with ambassadors and diplomats diplomats based in uh, build the capital and also from Baghdad and therefore we had to be there in order to show the support of the Department of Foreign Relations but also the KRG policy. Uh, I wanted to have this opportunity in the morning in order to thank our ministers for allocating their time and to be here with you to show the support of the Kurdistan government and all the ministers for your efforts and also for your participation in this Congress. In fact, the KRG has been following an open door policy. We have had this open door policy in order to reach out to the international community, in order to build bridges that benefit from the opportunities that we get. You've heard from our ministers that they had very clear mission and also vision statements. But of course, a lot has been said. Now it's time for action and for us to move forward. To move forward, we need to translate these into practical steps to benefit from them. We know in certain areas you can do a lot. We have qualified people here, and also we have qualified and talented people abroad. We can build the bridges in order to benefit from each other. But one thing I can tell you that with the mission, we have the challenges facing us, challenges internally, but also externally. With the vision that we have, with that clear vision, there is optimism, because we are optimistic about our future. But optimists, because what we see we have achieved compared not only with the rest of Iraq, that's going backward, compared it with other countries. We have progressed politically, economically, socially and culturally, and there is more to come. But it's important. And this kind of testimony is not from us. It's from others who have come to the region and who have seen the progress we have made. I would like to assure you that the KRG is committed to progress and prosperity. We in the Department of Foreign Relations, we work closely with the foreign diplomats who are based in the region. In fact, we do everything we can in order to encourage building bridges we are the ones who receive people at the airport. We are the ones who give them briefings about the situation here. Even without the knowledge of the relevant ministries, we talk a lot and we talk about every single sector. And that's why when I interfere or during my discussions, I can talk about many of the sectors and that's due to the need of this position. Because we have to know the KRG policy. We have to know where do we want to go and what do we want to achieve. You've seen from this morning that we are ready and we have been investing in education. Because as Prime Minister Barzani says, we invest in the education to secure a better future for our people. Investing in education, it means we invest in the future. Therefore, a lot, a lot has been allocated to the education, but it may not meet our expectations. Therefore, we have to revisit the programs to make sure that the programs are implemented properly so that we benefit from them. At the same time, we have invested in health sector because we want to have an educated and healthy society. If we do not have these two goals met, we cannot have a prosperous society. For us, education and health go hand in hand in order to make sure the society at large benefits from the policies of the government. We have also stressed on the need of women and empowerment of women and women to play a role in leadership. Not to have women just as numbers and figures to say, that, to say that we have female members in our parliament or government. We want to, women to be empowered so that they can play leading roles in the society and this is where they should fit. We have started programs about children, but of course we lack experience. We want to benefit from the world standard practices that are there so that we can ensure a better future for our children. There are a lot of things that KRG is doing, but they may not be tangible for you. 
We've been working on good governance and transparency. We've been, to we've been working on the rule of law and having a proper judicial system here in the region. We've been working on democracy, strengthening democratic pillars in this society and also encouraging the fourth sector, the civil society, so that they have an important role in this community. But these may not be tangible, but we're working hard in order to make sure that we have partners. Not everything is a public effort. We want to have the private sector with us in order to do it. Private sector and also the third sector, I mean the civil society institutions. We have adopted a successful economic policy. And the fact that Erbil International Trade Fair and also Soleimani, Soleimani International Trade Fair have become events that many of the embassies and many of the companies come to attend is a testimony of the success of that policy because we believe that with the free market economy, with that approach, we would be able to serve the economy of this region. And we do understand the important role that the private sector can play in improving the economy, providing job opportunities, but also uh, creating opportunities for people to have a better future. The KRG does its best in order to protect every citizen in this region. The safety and security that we enjoy in this region is thanks to the dedication and loyalty of the Peshmerga forces of the security apparatus. This would not have been possible without their vigilance and without their hard work. And this is what the rest of Iraq lacks. The KRG wants to respond to the needs of the people because we want our programs to be a reflection of the needs of the people. And at the same time, to make sure that our standard will be providing better services. Providing these services in a very effective and efficient manner. We have the leadership that sees our goal. In fact, talking about the University of Kurdistan Hawlia, uh, the thing that was not mentioned was the name of Prime Minister Nechivan Barzani who initiated that, and he found the need because he thought that there's a need in, in the market in Kurdistan to have young generation to be educated in order to fill the gap and also for people to be able to help our economy. So the University of Kurdistan Hamlet was a response to the demand that we wanted to have quality education. We've heard a lot of figures and numbers, but I would rather talk about quality and not quantity because not necessarily quantity means quality. We in the Kurdistan region are proud of the culture of tolerance that we have, with the peaceful coexistence that we enjoy in this region. Foreigners who have come to this region, they immediately feel that the Kurdish people and the people of Kurdistan are welcoming, friendly, and they want to interact with the outside world. And this is a treasure that we have to keep, and this, will, this is what takes us to the international community. In fact, as it was said yesterday, uh, Prime Minister Barzani has a number of times said our success would not be measured with high-rising buildings or airports or roads. It would be measured by our respect for human rights, for women's rights, for rule of law, for democracy. We, the Kurdistan regional government, have approached international firms in order to make sure that what we offer our people is going in line or parallel with the international standards. And that's why we've been engaged with National School of Government in the UK, with PricewaterhouseCoopers, with Rand Corporation, and many others, because we wanted to seek assistance and expertise of international reputable companies who would be able to provide their assistance to us. One thing would remain to our people in diaspora. We want you to be above party politics. We want you to think Kurdistanis because that will take us to our future. Leaving politics behind and focusing on sectors, health, education, agriculture, industry, private sector, this is what helps us. Because we have too many politicians to do politics. It's your job and your role and your mission to contribute positively to the success of our experience by being above politics and working for Kurdistan and the future of Kurdistan. In fact, uh, I believe there will be another session about assessing this Congress. A lot has been said, maybe a lot of negative feedback that I have received, 
but we will be open to criticism at that session. But I want to say that this has been an opportunity. This has been the first time that we do it. And the organizing committee inside, which I would like to take this opportunity once again to thank all those who have been working hard day and night before, during, and after this conference for their dedication and professionalism of the net. But of course, this is not flawless and this is not free of problems. But I want to assure you that the aim and the intention was to provide an opportunity for you to be here, for us to benefit from you, and for you to benefit from this opportunity. Once again, you are very welcome, and I'm pleased to have this opportunity. I wish to thank our speakers. Uh, Dr. Ahmed is